Multiverse Report. We are recapping the week and a little bit more is worth of news from Canto Bite to the Mines of Moria and everywhere in between. My name is Mike Gibson, back from a very busy weekend. Apologies for the delay. It's all on my shoulders. Uh, but with me, as always, is Steve Haller. What's up, Steve? Hey. Yeah, good luck with that, my friend. That happened to me last year. Uh, my kid's going to first grade tomorrow. We will see. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's, it's, it was old hat for a while, but it's been a couple months. So um, we'll see uh, what comes over me in the moment. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned earlier, of course, uh, we are recording days later than we normally do uh, on a Tuesday night. Usually we do it on a Sunday night. However... I had uh, some conflicts, some scheduling conflicts. We weren't able to do it, so we pushed it till today. But if you uh, are looking for us to talk about, you know, something that may have happened last week or over the weekend, namely the ABU Amazon Prime Original Series, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, you won't hear me talking about it, but you can hear an episode of... Steve Haller talking about it with friend of the pod, Colin Koberger, and that is up on the channel right now. How'd that go, Steve? Uh, went pretty well. Uh, did not expect the reaction I got from our friend Colin. Um, prior to that, so there's there's two that'll show up. The first is a five-minute uh, podcast. If you're if you're watching, you didn't get this glorious experience. But the uh, a five-minute podcast of me trying to talk into a mic to myself which I realized <laughs> does not work. I am that I'm not cut out for that. Uh, no, no. <laughs> however, uh, it's published, it's out there. It's a thing. So there's that. And then, uh, I talked for about an hour with Colin about various, uh, pieces and parts of the puzzle. Um, I believe the two of us had very different takes on it. So, um, you know, go and go and get your, your broad scale Lord of the Rings takes in. Um, I will say I enjoyed the first episode. I have not had time to sit through the second episode. I'm partly uh -huh. waiting. I'm partly waiting for my wife to say, "Hey, let's uh, let's let's watch the second or the the first episode, so I can get another yeah. another shot at that, and then watch the second. But sure. with that and Rings of Power and everything else, or with that and House of the Dragon and everything else dropping, um, yeah, time has been of the essence. Yeah, for sure, and um. I have not heard the Lord of the Rings review that you're speaking of because I haven't watched either episode. So I'm going to wait till uh, listen to that until uh, sometime this week I can sit down and watch both those and get caught up on House of the Dragon because I haven't had time to watch that as well. So yeah, we did miss our instant reaction of House of the Dragon this week as well, but we'll probably get back to that again this coming Sunday, I believe, as long as our schedules yeah. are open. We shall see. I, I even made fancy new thumbnails for it for YouTube. Ooh, fancy yeah. new YouTube thumbnails. Watch out, YouTube watchers, for those fancy new House of the Dragon thumbnails coming at you. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, should we get into... Oh, similar weeks? similar on oh. She-Hulk. Uh, we won't be touching on She-Hulk as well. Oh, yes. Just because the new episode will be dropping tomorrow, so we're just going to hit it both this weekend. Yeah, we figure that um, most of you uh, listening to this probably listen to it the day after we record it, which will be when the next episode of She-Hulk comes out. So I uh, thought it was maybe a little, a uh, little, nah, you know, kind of pointless to do <laughs> review right. episode three when episode four is already going to be out. So uh, yeah. we're just going to wait and do three and four at the same time uh, next week. That said, Cliff Notes, a lot of fun. I was going to say, I'm continue, still in with this. Yeah. I continue to love this show. Um, it's just, it's making a lot of misogynists real mad. <laughs> um, but honestly, I, I think it's one of the stronger, it's one of the stronger, uh, Disney plus Marvel shows. I think Absolutely. Like it's yep. up there for me so far. It's only been, you know, two, three episodes or whatever so far. So yeah, yeah, really digging it. Um, but all right. Um, I feel like usually when we push the show a few days, we have a ton of stuff to cover and, uh, we don't really have a ton. We have a good amount, uh, not too much to super dig into, but. I'm very excited that we're not just talking about negative DC stuff the entire time this week. Still a little bit of that, of course, so stay tuned for that. But for the first time in what feels like forever, we're not kicking this thing off with news about DC. We, uh, for the first time in some time, get to talk about 
one of our favorite things. And we get to do that in a galaxy far, far away. That's right. We're talking about Star Wars. Not mm. that there was any big super news from Star Wars, but there was uh, an interesting development or an interesting quote from Ryan Johnson. Uh, Ryan Johnson starting to do promotion for his Knives Out sequel, uh, Knives Out or it's Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, I think is what it's called. That's a title. It is a strange title, and I wonder if it's specifically referencing the Beatles song, Glass mm -hmm. Onion. Um, but uh, I'm excited to see the Knives Out sequel. I think it's very strange that it's not theatrical and that he made a deal with Netflix to, I don't know, I feel like hmm. he would really cash in on a theatrical release of a Knives Out sequel because that movie was great and it uh, was really well received. I still have never seen Knives Out, so. Oh, you should watch it. It's a lot of fun. It's great. I've heard nothing but good things. It just yeah, it's hasn't, like a, hasn't been there. A whodunit that uh, uh, surprises you, like with um, a whodunit that's different than any other whodunit you've ever seen. Yeah, seems Major like quite one, the cast in there too. So oh yeah, and the cast is phenomenal, and the cast of the second one is phenomenal as well. So I'm very excited. But shows anyway, you what I know. I didn't even know they made a second one. So. Okay. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm right on top of things, as you can tell. Yeah, it's got, um, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of who's in it. Well, uh, Daniel Craig. Yep. Daniel Craig is like the detective in the first one. He's back. Um, I know there's more. The only people I can think of off the top of my head are Ed Norton and Janelle Monet are both in this. Oh. And oh, I'm sure, it's got to be good. A lot of other great people. Yeah, contrary, but, contrary to all those ones they put out at the holidays with the huge cast that are just horrible. Yeah. Um, right. This seems like it's a huge cast of good people that actually can act. Yeah. Oh, Dave Bautista also is in it. I know. Oh. I'm remembering that now. Um, but really, that's not even half of the names in the cast for sure. Right. So check it out. But we're not here to talk about Knives Out. This is not a, a murder mystery podcast. This is a nerd podcast. So we're talking about a movie that Ryan Johnson made that is firmly within the nerd universe. Divisive as it may be. I'm talking about The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. No, we're not talking about it, but that's the movie that he made. Right. And um, he gave this interview with Empire Magazine, again, promoting the Knives Out sequel. And, of course, it's hard for – I feel like it's hard for any Star Wars director to not get asked Star Wars questions, especially when you have written and directed the most divisive – or most? Probably no, most that's divisive. it's definitely the most divisive. Most um, divisive film in the in the series. Yeah. Far from the shittiest, but definitely the most divisive. Correct. Yes. Agreed. Um, not only did he uh, uh, restate that he's very proud of the film, Last Jedi, and um, proud of the work that he did and thinks that it's, uh, believes in its message, believes that it's a tribute to all of Star Wars canon. Many people agree with that. Some people think it's a slap in the face to all Star Wars canon that came before. Um, I... I'm I don't go I'm more in the I'm more in the positive category. Yeah. But uh you know, there's some stuff I don't like, you know. Um, oh yeah, is it an A plus? No. Is it the uh, straight F? Also no. Like Yeah. It's good. It's I feel like it's, it's hard we we are tangenting already. We knew we haven't were going gotten to gotten to the story, of course. Um I feel like it's hard for me because the fandom is so split and the there's so many people that, that will say it's the greatest Star Wars movie ever made. And those people are really loud about it. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of people that think it's the worst Star Wars movie ever made, and those people are really loud about it. So I hear those two sides so often that I feel like I can't just be in the middle. Like, it's almost yeah. like I, I need to be in one of these camps. But and I'm like, no, you don't have to. You can just think it's okay. You can love a lot of it and not like some of it. That's okay. That's okay. Right. Is it probably the so. sixth or seventh best Star Wars movie ever? Then sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll get behind that. But um, the, will, the other yeah. thing with it is I did I did convince a couple of people over the course, uh, people that initially were like, uh, I didn't like it, but not for the, the stupid reasons, but for like real, like sure. real critique. Yeah, yeah. I was like, watch it again. And the second time really smooths a lot of things out because you don't go in with the same expectations. Yep. That's why and, I, yeah. I've said this a million times on this podcast. I'll say it a million more times before I die. Star Wars, all about whether or not you like a new Star Wars thing, is all about your personal expectations, yeah. what you want it to be, what you think it should be. Um, 
Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, I will say that I think, I think that it is the best looking Star Wars movie. I think that movie is absolutely gorgeous, incredibly shot. The cinematography is yeah. wonderful, beautiful, incredible. I say it's the best looking Star Wars movie. Yeah, from a but, cinematography standpoint, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, you know, are there are there dogfights? Are there battles? Are there things that look better? But tip to tail, I'm with you. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about Last Jedi before we diverge. I don't really. Uh, we'll come back. I'm sure. I don't want. I don't want to get in the weeds. <laughs> anything. Anything over this will 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 go down a real rabbit hole. Yep. But hey, pretty much anytime I shit on Star Wars movies. We get uh, people commenting and responding and interacting with us, so maybe maybe that's the word we should take. <laughs> get the people uh, paying attention. But anyway, we're not here to talk about the Last Jedi. We're not here to talk about Knives Out, and we're not here to talk about the Last Jedi. We're here to talk about the future of Star Wars and whether or not Ryan Johnson is going to be a part of it. Because some of you may remember, some of you may not know. Well, you may know from us talking about. Uh, a number of productions of Star Wars movies of late, Rogue One, um, Solo, uh, the last one, Rise of Skywalker. Yep. Have been. The, no, we'll uh, just go with the last one. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of it. Um, all three of those productions have been uh, troubled behind the scenes uh, in various ways, to say the least. Last minute changes, rewrites, directors getting fired and replaced over halfway through <laughs> production. Um, those things really happened. <laughs> the yeah. movies oh, came yeah. out to varying quality. Um, uh, but all reports um, from Ryan Johnson and the Last Jedi crew that it was the smoothest smart Star Wars production in recent history. Uh, Emma, Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm loved working with him. They thought he was a great director. He was easy to work with. He was on time. He was on schedule. There was no hiccups. They didn't have to fire him and reshoot. 80% of his movie. Right. Um, they loved working with him. They loved working with him so much that they gave him his own Star Wars trilogy that I believe was announced before The Last Jedi even came out. They were so happy. Lucasfilm was over the moon with Ryan Johnson and the product that was The Last Jedi until it came out and, as we already talked about, divided the fan base almost completely in yeah. two. And... Uh, they were all in on Ryan Johnson leading the charge in the Star Wars cinematic world. And, it, um, so it, the, and they announced it, this trilogy. It was at a comfortable spot where they did that, too. Like Everybody's riding high off Force Awakens. Yep. They're having a great time. And, and, Rogue, working, One. and yeah. Rogue One just came out. Yep, and they're having a great time working with Johnson on Last Jedi. And they announced that, and then... Everything happened with the fallout from what we saw on the screen. Yeah. And then moved into the fallout from, like, the fallout from The Last Jedi hampered Solo. Yep. Because um, Lucasfilm was then scared to even promote uh, or market Solo until, like, two months before it came out, which meant no one knew that it was coming out. And, you know, we can get into the merits of right. whether or not no, people Nobody knew about. it was coming out dead nuts in between Deadpool 2 and Avengers. Yeah, time slots. There's solo is a whole other podcast. We could do right. that. For oh a whole yeah. Other yeah. Um, although I said it before, I love that movie. I think it's great. But um, that really threw Ryan Johnson's trilogy into question. The backlash against Last Jedi. People started saying that's not going to happen. They're going to cancel that. And we haven't heard anything about it really since then. There's been no nothing about it. Right. Except uh, Kathleen Kennedy mentioned it or was asked about it, and I think I believe it was a Vanity Fair piece that came out before um, before Obi Wan debuted. Yep. We talked about it on this show. Ran down. Um, someone asked her about the Ryan Johnson trilogy. She had something to say about it, which we'll get to in a second. But this past week, Ryan Johnson was asked about it in this interview with Empire Magazine, and he said the following: "I've stayed close to Kathleen Kennedy, and we get together often and we talk about it, meaning his trilogy." It's just at this point a matter of schedule and when it can happen. It would break my heart if I were finished, if I couldn't go back into that sandbox at some point. So it's not canceled. No. This trilogy is still on the table. And they're still talking about it, according to Ryan Johnson, and he really still wants to do it, despite the uh, 
the backlash. hate and yeah. backlash and I'm, I believe death threats he received for what he did with The Last Jedi. Um, he still wants to um, play in the Star Wars sandbox, as he said, and I'm down with that. And that quote is really in line with what Kathleen Kennedy said at Vanity, in the Vanity Fair article a few months ago. She said, now everybody's so busy, genuinely busy and working on things. Ryan had such a gigantic success with Knives Out, and he's very committed to try to get that done, meaning the sequel to Lives Out, Knives Out. So it'll be a while, and we have to work. We have three, five years. We have to work three, five years in advance of what we're doing. So that's where that sits. But we love him. Right. Those those two quotes match up pretty well. Like that's not off the table. I think. Well, and they, that that jives a lot with Rogue Squadron too, where like every time somebody asks, like it's not canceled. It's just pushed out into whenever the hell Patty Jenkins can actually get to it. And I yeah. think I think at this point it feels like Lucasfilm is more than happy to bite a little time, let the stove cool off a little, and yeah. then you know crank it back up to the things that we've heard are going to be announced or were announced and are going right. to be in production. And they they seem like great. I mean, we don't know anything about Johnsons, but like to come back with Rogue Squadron, like that that's that's going. You know, that's going to be a solid hit. And yeah. if they can channel any bit of the only other non-Jedi, well, no, one of two non-Jedi uh, movies they've done in Rogue One, uh, it, it really could be another blockbuster and another, you know, one that moves towards the top of the, the food chain in Star Wars movies. Because there's yeah. a lot of world out there that doesn't revolve around somebody with the last name Skywalker. I know, and I think... I mean, we don't know. We don't know anything about this trilogy at all. We don't know any. D he's. I don't think he's ever said a general plot nope. or characters or anything. I don't think he said a word about what it's going to be about. So we don't know anything. But I'm pretty sure that even the people that hated Last Jedi or don't like Last Jedi, I'm sh I'm sure that there are idiots that hate Last Jedi and therefore would refuse to see anything that Ryan Johnson ever does again in the Star Wars universe. Right. But I also think there's probably people out there that hate The Last Jedi, but they like his other movies, and they only hate what he did with the characters that they love. And if he was making a Star Wars trilogy with characters that they are not connected to from the time that they were eight years old or whatever, then they would probably enjoy that story much more because of the right. expectations aren't there, you know? I mean, um, most of the problem with out, outside of people complaining about the Mary Sueness of Ray and people bitching about Luke joke. being, yeah. you know, what what direction they took him, yeah, like that that was it. Those are your two points. Yeah, I mean that, and you know, uh, all the, for lack of better term, shit bags that uh, went after Kelly Marie Tran for being Kelly Marie Tran. Oh yeah, well those people like. You can't even count those. Those are the people that aren't going to watch it, no matter what. Those oh, are the, yeah. Those people aren't going to watch anything that uh, stars a woman in a position of anything. strength or power in any yeah. way, or they'll watch it just to complain of it, complain about it, and shit on it. So, um, I'm not even really thinking of those people because they don't matter to me <laughs> at I, all. Well, and they and, matter to but Lucas that's the film. thing is like, I don't know how many actual critics that I read or anything along those lines that remotely panned it like it seemed like it was pretty critically it seemed like it was pretty well received yeah yeah i think so and casual star wars fans um i think liked it a lot uh and it you know there's parts of it that do rub me the wrong way or there's parts that i i don't love the way it goes and like here's the thing when i'm watching it i'm like this is great i don't yeah. i don't question it in the moment i do not question it but then afterwards it's like eh. I don't, I feel like it just would have blah blah blah. I well, as weird I, as I that I sounds, that was me with the prequels too. Like Attack of the Clones, yeah. I watched Attack of the Clones in the theater, midnight release. Yoda pulls out his yeah. goddamn lightsaber, and the entire theater goes wild. And I'm like, this was yeah. great. And then you watch it again, and you're like, this was less than great. Yeah, <laughs> very very much less than great. And I honestly, um, I am. I know I've said this before on the show as well. I think it's probably been a while since I've said it, but. Uh, I am firmly of the opinion that regardless of whether or not you liked Last Jedi, 
I think the bigger failure is on Rise of Skywalker for not seeing those threads through to a meaningful conclusion. And I think whether you like, you know, I, I know people that don't like The Force Awakens, and I know people that right. don't like The Last Jedi. Um, but I think regardless of how you feel about either of those movies, I think if if Rise of Skywalker paid attention to what the first two movies were doing, and instead of just trying to appease everybody, then I, I think it would have made a stronger trilogy overall. If it connected yeah. more dots than it, you know, it just was making stuff up on the fly instead of like naturally following, you know. Well, and threads. retconning half of the prior two movies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't, yeah. they, they weren't following threads. They burnt the whole damn sweater down. Well, that's what they weren't following them. I said, if right. it, like, it, it should have been something that like flowed naturally yeah. into, like, The Last Jedi set up a thrill. Like, The Last Jedi is strange because the way it ends, it could be like the last movie. And sometimes I like to think that it is because I don't like to think about Rise of Skywalker. Right. But, um, you know, a, a yeah, that, lot Oh, there, that's what you there, do. Your Skywalker saga? You can take out Rise of Skywalker, you bookend it with Last Jedi, you add in Rogue One. Right? Yeah. There's there your is. nine movies. You've still got yeah. nine movies. You're good. <laughs> the uh, the guys from Star Wars Minute, um, a great podcast for any Star Wars nerds out there. If you haven't listened to Star Wars Minute, you should check it out. Um, they often say how they should have they should have had a trilogy, like the sequel trilogy, and then they should have done one tenth movie that wrapped up Mm. everything because it seemed like they just tried to do everything in nine right and if they just like well let's just let the kylo ren and ray story like finish up naturally and then we can do all this legacy right put a coat on it and... tie up all yep. three trilogies in one you know big movie or whatever and i can see that but also i just feel i feel like if if jj had naturally followed the threads from last jedi because i i don't a lot of people See, now we're going down the rabbit hole. There's a, a lot of people don't see the connections between Last Jedi and Force Awakens, and I think that's insane. I think Last Jedi literally picks up immediately after the end of Force Awakens, which I actually think is a weakness of the movie, but... It's the only say, Star Wars that it, movie that does that. I know. Um, and I think it would have been mm, probably better suited if it didn't, but... Mm -hmm. uh, but to say that it doesn't follow the what was set up in force awakens is crazy i think i think it does it very well and answers the questions that were set up in force awakens but then skywalker just like doesn't seem interested in doing that at all no i i don't i don't know anyone other than jj abrams that would have watched seven and then watched eight and said we got to bring the emperor back for nine like that's just what that doesn't make sense right. like kylo ren's right there he's right there he's the bad guy that's that's your bad guy we already care about him doesn't make sense so i i think of that i think if the third movie was better then people would have looked back on last jedi in a different light anyway long story <laughs> short ryan johnson trilogy still on the table i uh think that this will be good for star wars fans i i think i think knowing pretty much that fallout from last jedi rolling into the fallout from solo is why we haven't seen a new star wars movie since and plus the focus on disney plus um you know they were gonna make a boba fett movie turned into um, Book of Boba Fett. Who knows if that movie would have been any better, though, because, you know, show is mixed for sure. Um, hey, we got two Mandalorian episodes out of it that were good. That's true. And uh, what I'm really hoping, or I would, I, what I would love, we got D23 right around the corner. I would Actually, love to hear... Friday. Oh, it's this Friday? Isn't it September 9th? Ooh, I thought it was, like, late September. Let's do some quick Googling on this and figure out when this is. But, it well, is not in 2019. I mean, it was. No. But, uh, yeah. 2022 is, oh, September 28th. For some reason, I thought it was okay, September yeah. 9th. Oh, yeah. No. On September 28th, 2020, they announced that the 7th D23 Expo will be held September 9th to 11th, 2022, oh. at the Anaheim Convention Center. So it looks well, like we're right, talking then. a lot this weekend. All right. Yeah, for sure. All right. We will, I guess Sunday's episode is going to be pretty big. This so, also, um, in hindsight, makes a lot more sense why we haven't had Marvel news for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, well, I'm hoping that then this weekend, I would love to get an update on, I mean, to say they're going to announce all, all three of the things I'm about to say is probably 
uh, silly to think that they're going to do all of these. I would love them to announce the Ryan Johnson trilogy, re-announce Rogue Squadron, mm -hmm. and announce the Taika Waititi movie. Yeah. Get all those things off the ground and in moving firm, firmly in hype mode. I mean, when did Skywalker come out? Was that 19? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it had to have been because I saw it in theaters. Uh, exactly. And it's na not named Multiverse of Madness, and that's the only yeah. movie I've seen in the last <laughs> yeah. three years. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you're getting you know, maybe announce it for, you know, push things out, maybe announce it 2024 or whatever. Um, you know, especially if things haven't moved on it, but like get something on the slate again. And yeah, I would say that five years is probably a nice little gap for them to, you know, yeah, you've played in the, played in the TV space. People are still high on the, the IP. Um, yeah. Filoni's kind of brought things back to where people actually want to see Star Wars yeah. again. We're, yeah, we're not as worn out on it as we are on Marvel stuff or some right. people are on Marvel stuff. Yeah. As the Marvel so, guy, I'm getting there. Exactly. Yeah. Unless they keep so putting out like, She-Hulk, and then we're good. Yeah. Let's try to remember after we do one shots at the end of this episode, talk a little more about D twenty three and kind of like okay. what we're hoping to see. All right, we'll come back what to we're that. We'll learn. put a we'll put a pin in that one. Yeah. So, but for now, let's move on uh, to the DC universe. Uh, so, not really much to dig into on this, um, <laughs> but just a follow up from uh, last week's episode where we talked about how Dan producer Dan Lin was in talks to take over. Um, as DC chief of their film and television projects, that is not happening. Apparently negotiations with Lynn have stalled and uh, they don't look like they're going to move forward anymore with Dan Lynn. When is and, the last uh, time we've had good news coming out of DC? Like we've talked a lot about DC. When's the last good thing or like net well, good week we've had for them? Uh, oh, net good week. Well, because last week we did talk about how Matt Reeves signed an overall deal. Mm, so, yeah, like, true. Matt Reeves yep. is firmly entrenched. We do have one positive DC story coming up here in a second. Uh, after a after a second negative one, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so we're still in that well, negative. One, <laughs> but this this one's not. I I can't even really say that this is negative or positive because right, this is just, like it's net. Just, it's just something that's not happening. Yeah, right. Rumor came out. Like, rumor was not substantiated. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, it, I believe it was happening. It, he's just not going to sign on to do it. Okay. It's not that it. It's not that he. It's not that the no negotiations weren't happening. Right. So stuff he's, fell through. He's saying he's not going to do it. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, like, who knows? That could have been great. Or I think I said last week, like, this could be great or it could be bad. But I don't know what this guy's plans would be yet. So yep. it's hard to say until he says, I'm going to bring back Henry Cavill and Greenlight a Superman trilogy. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to force Matt Reeves to put Superman in the Batman 2 and, you know, whatever. Like. That's for me. That'd be good, but if he came back and was like, "I'm bringing Zack Snyder back, and I'm gonna make Superman the villain of like, okay, no, that that would be bad." So, but right. now it's just who who knows? We'll never know, and who cares? So they'll find some. They'll look for. They'll keep looking for somebody else. Um, and my my hope is that eventually they'll go through so many people that they'll ask me to do it, and then I can. Oh, there you go. I'll, I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Yeah, throw your name I'll, in the hat and call it a day. Yeah. Zaslav, I'll do it for way less money than you're gonna play pay Dan Lin, like way less money. You know, You'll Mike, still, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Money. The amount on Twitter you've been shitting on David Zaslav, I'm pretty sure he doesn't read or listen to the pod. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been that much, just occasionally. <laughs> I think Maybe the like, I think just the amount the two of us have said on the show is enough to be like, hey, he's probably not tuning in next week. <laughs> But maybe he's one of those like guys that's so egocentric that he needs to know what everybody's talking mm, about. Him. There you, you go. Know what I mean? Or he would bring me on as a power move to like watch me fail at mm. it, but I'd be so good at it that he wouldn't be able to fire me because I'd be so good and I'd make them so much money. You writing your next comic book now? <laughs> Is that, uh, the, that the plot? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I would take over the film and TV projects just to um get hired by dc comics <laughs> so i could make like, a force <laughs> dc comics to let me write for them yeah that's what I would yep do. um anyway so yeah that's not happening apparently it was in regard he has his own production company mm -hmm. but you know that's making tv and film projects as well and 
apparently that's where the deal stalled, I guess, where he was going to have to either fold his company into Warner Brothers Discovery or uh. give it up or something else, and he didn't want to have to do that. He wanted to remain independent, and that's where they stuck, so he walked away. Good for him. Yeah. Um, do what you're going to do. Hopefully I assume they find that's somebody... a lot of zeros you walked away from, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's no slouch. He's making blockbuster hits, so. Yeah. You know, he's, I don't, he doesn't feel like someone who needs the money. But, True. You know. No, no millionaire needs more money, <laughs> but no. Know, but it's always good to America. see that, uh, you know, artistic integrity. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyway, moving on to another. Well, again, that was like a, ne- a neutral story. This one is a negative one, especially for DC fans all around the world in the last two years that loved something called DC Fandom, a at-home online uh, DC convention that uh, they thought up during the pandemic. They did it two years in a row. It was great. Dropped a tons of trailers, tons of news, tons of announcements, tons of interviews with casts and sneak peeks and all this really great stuff. We talked about it a few weeks ago when Zaslav canceled Batgirl. I was pretty sure this was not going to happen. And guess what? DC Fandom is confirmed to not be happening in 2022. This Warner is... Brothers Discovery. Go ahead. I was going to say, this is right on the heels of what we just talked about, D23 dropping this weekend. Yeah, but that's not that's an in-person thing, though, right? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think the cool thing about Fandom is that it was virtual, and anybody could go, and you just watch it from home at YouTube. You don't have to be in Anaheim, California, and pay hundreds of dollars to get there. That was, like, the coolest thing about it. Like, we could all sit at home on our couches and watch the announcements of James Gunn's Suicide Squad and yep. at the you know Blue Beetle and all this cool stuff. You know, we got the first look at the Batman, Matt Reeves movie. Like that was awesome from home. You know, right? Um, you know, and we'll see clips and stuff from D twenty three, but like DC fandom was like, you're there. Well, no, D twenty three they fully stream it as well. Oh, they do. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, oh, I'm pretty sure okay. they do. To like D twenty three members. So. Oh, uh, there you go. Matt, uh, you can fill us in, since I'm sure you're listening. Uh, let us know as soon as things happen. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, but this way you didn't even have to be a member. You just had to go to like their website and right, and just full it, so. random yeah. streaming so cool. to whoever. Yeah, um, but anyway, it's not happening, and it's not really a surprise that it's not happening, especially when right now the future of the DC universe is kind of up in the air. Um, right. But it's not like they wouldn't have stuff to talk about. When we talked about last week, their slate, they got. Uh, well, I guess maybe Black Adam would be out by then, but even not, you, you know, you have Black Adam, you'd have the Flash, you'd have Blue Beetle, you'd have even like Joker stuff, or you know, you'd have Matt Reeves talk more about Batman Two stuff. But anyway, it's a bummer that's not happening. They released a statement that said, "With the return of in-person events, Warner Brothers Discovery is excited to be able to engage with our fans live at numerous Comic Cons around the world, and will not be scheduling DC Fandom for 2022." And it just seems dumb, I guess. Like, like you know, like D23, that's like their Disney's own thing. This is their hub of stuff. And that's what DC Fandom was. And it was very successful. It had, like, tons of viewers, tons of people looking in. And it was it was the same thing as, like, HBO Max used to be. Or right. the goal of HBO Max was, like, let's bring everything under one roof. Like, we don't have to necessarily go to Comic-Con if we have our own thing. Like D23. You know, they do some stuff at Comic-Con. And they save a lot of stuff for d23 so it's their own they own the news cycle they own the nerd news cycle that week that's what dc fandom was for warner brothers characters and now it's not happening anymore i don't know that's a huge bummer for me but what are you gonna do about it just nothing i guess right just nothing and that was until he hires until he hires me to be in charge of everything right then you can do something um so d d23 i looked it up the schedule is out and um, apparently it is a free live watch at uh, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, where we're currently at. Uh, or YouTube awesome. if you're watching us there or whatever. Cool. Um, but, you know, they're dropping right. like a Disney and Marvel Games showcase. Um, you can wait, actually... Wait, wait, wait. Wa- Let's Hold on. Let's save this for the end. We're going to talk about DC23 at the end. Oh, I forgot we added Let's that to the end. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll put this tab over there then. Yeah, but that's good that it's uh, for free to watch. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. I don't know why Warner Brothers can't do it. Own, you, can own your own, you can own your own news cycle for an entire weekend if you wouldn't, you know. Uh, right. Whatever. 
that was, I mean, fandom, that was what everybody was talking about when things dropped. Yeah, like we got Black Adam stuff. I think that was the first, you know, the Rock. Yeah, they Black dropped Adam the trailer stuff or Shazam whatever. Shazam stuff. It's just like yep. there's just so much in Doom Patrol. Like, I, I, oh, man, it's just so dumb. Which was confirmed to be continuing, right? That and yes, Titans at least said, another year. Well, yeah, because because the seasons are already almost completed and shot. So oh, yeah. they're going. I think they're going to make decisions after they are released and see the numbers on them. Right. If they continue on. But I don't know, like, to me, if a show gets to, like, four seasons, then that's a lot. That's a oh, lot yeah. of seasons, you know, for, like, that's, that's, a, that's a good run for any show, I think. Right. So Not, not everything that I, has I to be The Flash. Exactly. I don't want Doom Patrol to end, but I get four seasons of a Doom Patrol show that, you know, great. Awesome. Yeah. As long as Zaslav doesn't delete it from HBO Max, <laughs> like he has done a bunch of other stuff. So right. that would be terrible but you know whatever four seasons is good i i won't i'll be i'll be upset but i won't be completely heartbroken if they end up canceling titans and doom patrol after a fourth season of both Mm -hmm. makes Um, sense i am heartbroken that the swamp thing series that they made at the same time that they made titans and hbo max or titans and sorry doom patrol is not available on hbo max it's a one season swamp thing show it's great it's not anywhere and i feel like it's never going to be and i'm mad about it blah Anyway, speaking of HBO Max and DC and one good piece of news we got from DC this week, despite them cracking down on animated content, Harley Quinn season uh, or sorry, Harley Quinn has been renewed for season four on HBO Max. Co-creator Patrick Schumacher said on Twitter that it's coming, quote, sooner than you may think. So that's cool because it took him a real long time to make season three and, uh, Similar, I I think they made season one and two at the same time, and they just broke it up because they weren't sure how it was going to be received. And it was received incredibly well, season one. So they released the second half uh, as season two, like a few months, like three months later or something. It was great. So um, hopefully we don't have to wait too long. seems like we won't have to wait as long as we had to wait for season three. Hopefully we don't have to wait too long. Um, Season three of Harley is currently airing right now, weekly. New episodes come out on Thursdays. It's wrapping up uh, a couple weeks on September 15th. Uh, I am caught up on it. It's hilarious. Very funny. Just continuing to be the best, the, the, the best way to just, uh, take the piss out of characters in ways that show a very strong understanding of the characters. There's a great, most recent episode was great where Harley goes inside the mind of Bruce Wayne and has to like help him deal with his childhood trauma in ways that are very funny, but also like kind of heartwarming at the same time like i got a little like not completely emotional but just like oh my god that's so oh my god that's amazing it's like, just like <laughs> they're, they're, just really they're great that? okay yeah just really really great and there's a lot of like batman the animated series references to that one and stuff's cool like red sky and gritty backgrounds and stuff yep. it was really great so a shout out for harley quinn can't praise that show enough hopefully that gets uh that keeps going as well oh speaking of um, animated dc uh wasn't this earlier this week the 30th anniversary of Batman the Animated Series? Yes, I think it was yesterday yeah. or Sunday. It was like the, yeah, the 30th anniversary of the first episode of Batman the Animated Series on Leather Wings, which I remember watching and just being blown away. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's a uh, man bat is the villain in the first episode. Really? Okay. Yeah, and um, he's like a terrifying monster, and they... They really make it pretty scary. It's pretty scary. Like, it was yeah. pretty, like, right out of the gate. It was like, this isn't really for kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, it is, but it's also a little it's a little edgy. Or edgier than what you think an animated Batman show is going to be. It was a good right. way to start it off. So. so, yeah, happy anniversary to Batman the Animated Series. Currently streaming on HBO Max uh, for now. I feel like I have to say that about everything on HBO Max for now. Because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. But let's please move on from dc finally after weeks and weeks of nothing like you said steve we got some news from marvel what's this week's uh news from marvel well this week it seems like uh you have sir ben kingsley reappearing as tony slattery in the disney plus wonder man series which uh i don't know if um i don't know if was completely expected but uh also (laughs) wasn't expected that 
Ben Kingsley would be reprising that role at all, and this is the second time he will after appearing yeah. in Iron Man 3 and then uh, following it up with the Shang-Chi appearance uh, when he, <laughs> since he was the fake Mandarin, um, and apparently now will be in Wonder Man. Yeah, makes me... Well, well, first, we, there had been rumors that this show was going to be like a Hollywood satire kind of show because mm-hmm. Wonder Man is a stunt man or an actor. Something like the, that, yeah. In the books. Um, this seems to further further those rumors a little bit, being that Tony Slattery is a failed, drunken actor <laughs> um, at the same time. Um, yeah, I, I did not expect him to show up in Shang-Chi, but it made sense, I guess, because... Mandarin, Mandarin was mad at him for pretending to be the Mandarin, which had been hinted at. But it makes me wonder, like, is it going to be a flashback? How did he get out of that? Does he, what happens at the end of Shang-Chi? Does he leave with them? Does he leave that prison that he's in? Mm, I think so. I think he does, doesn't he? He does. So yeah. he escapes. Okay. Okay. Because for a second I was like, wait, is he still in that prison? And then is this going to be a in the past? Is it going to be like a flashback? Like, what's the timeline of the journey of? Tony Slattery. Yeah, because it was um, him. Yeah, because because he yeah didn't he got it, with Morris, with right? I believe so. The big yeah. pet the furry thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, whatever I that, that is. Movie again. Yeah, I only saw that once. I should see it again. Um, I don't know how I pulled Morris out of my ass for that. But. Yeah, I know, but I knew who exactly who we were talking <laughs> yeah. about when you said it. I couldn't uh. have said that. I would not have even remembered it. So uh, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, they needed him because he knew how to get to the place that they were going to. But I don't think he went right with them at the end or he did and he stayed there i don't know i don't remember that movie it was wild um so uh wonder man we're back to talking about wonder man does mr this make simon you more... williams himself yeah does this make you any more excited for a wonder man series it makes me relatively apathetic just like i've been for the entire since they announced it so yeah yeah i mean he's a thing He's a thing, and uh, he's a thing I don't care about really at all. So <laughs> to me, it's going to come down to like a trailer, I think, unless they cast somebody I love, which, by the way, I thought of something. Oh, yeah? Um, I, don't, I don't think there's any credence to this. Because, I mean, there's been rumors for years, years, that Henry Cavill is going to jump ship from Warner Brothers and show up in an MCU thing. And they're still hard right now, like yes, in full effect. yes. Yeah, of course. Um, and there's people saying that he's going to show up at D23 and he's going to be in... Yeah, I mean, you're hearing like yeah, him, he, John Boyega, everybody under the sun that yeah. could be involved in fandom that is just, like, throw exactly. throw names at a wall, see what sticks. Right. But I got to say, I think Henry Cavill would make a pretty good Wonder Man. Yeah. Throw yeah. some like red glasses on him. He's ripped. He's adorable. He's super hot, you know, and he's like... He could, right. he could be, I feel like he could be a kind of aloof actor. And then I was going to say, I don't, I don't know if you're going to drop Henry Cavill money for that. And then I'm like, wait, he's in a bunch of TV shows and Disney doesn't care what they spend on their TV shows, judging yeah. by who's been in all of them. So uh, maybe, I mean, he's always been maybe. the weird Avenger, but yeah. I know. Okay. I think, I think Cavill could make that work. Um, but there's also rumors that he's going to show up as Superman in, you know, either Black Adam or Shazam or something. So who right. who knows? And I I don't think if he's still going to be Superman, there's no way he's going to show up in the MCU. So that'll be like a wait and see kind of thing. Like if right if he's in if he ends up cameoing in Black Adam, then we're not going to see him in the MCU ever. There's no way. I mean, I can't say there's no way, but I would be very surprised if Warner Brothers let him make that deal. So do but, you know um, who the original person to be cast as? Simon Williams was. Yeah, I think we talked about it when we talked about the uh, the show being announced. It was Nathan Fillion? Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. Back when Guardians was, uh, they were gonna cameo in Guardians. Yeah, Guardians too. Yep. yep. So that'd be great. Yeah, I like him. I I feel like he might be a little on the older end at this point. For I think he's probably a little too old for it. Yep. But I would like. I wouldn't be surprised if they find a way to put him in the show in some way as a reference oh like, yeah like the, the MCU little easter egg to, to that grab kind of thing. yeah yeah exactly yep so we'll see we'll see we'll see um let's talk about some comics i thought there was a really cool announcement um of a comic this week that i wanted to talk about um 
and it gives us an excuse to talk about the flash without having to talk about ezra miller <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um so the creative team behind uh, the current flash run jeremy adams and uh roger clark i think my autocorrect changed roger to target clark i don't know how that happened yeah that's a weird one it's very strange human, human um, target are we were you there are we re, yeah. re-upping the series or <laughs> yeah Jeremy Adams and Roger Clark will be bringing us a story in The Flash called One Minute War. This is a story about The Flash has to stop an alien invasion of aliens who are also connected to the Speed Force and has to stop them from taking over the world. And the entire story will happen in the span of one minute. Uh, One Minute War kicks off in January in Flash 790. And it's also going to be the start of The Flash coming out twice a month. So I think they're starting to ramp up to get to some... Uh, big anniversary number. Yeah, whether Some, it's similar to Spidey there. A thousand. Yeah, they're trying to get to a thousand. I think. Yeah. Um, but they're putting in the work. They're not doing any amazing fantasy. <laughs> you know, let's jump from whatever to a thousand. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but uh, I gotta say, I don't read a ton of. I've read Flash comics. I don't collect. I don't. He's not on my pull list or anything like that. But I think I'm gonna pull this book because I feel just like. I don't. I've never heard of anything like this happening in Flash books before, but it's such a great way to show off the power. Like this. Like this is something that the Flash can do that not every other character can do because he's a speedster. Right. He can move so fast. Like you're telling an entire epic war saga within one normal person's minute. It's such a cool way to tap into the powers of a character in a way that hasn't been done before. Um, right. And I just think that's a, such, such a cool way to showcase what this character can, character can do as opposed to other characters. So it's just a, it's a super cool idea, I think. So why not? Yeah. Flash one minute work. And then I feel like also that'd be a great thing to adapt. And like, imagine if we got like, I, you know, if they keep making Flash movies by like Flash 3, the whole movie takes place in like a minute. That'd be great. <laughs> that'd be so cool. It'd be like the end of Inception when everything else is like moving. It just cuts yep. to things moving in super slow motion, so you know Whoa, everything. Spoiler, is. man! Great. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> There's slow motion and tons of. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. This and that, week that only came out what a decade ago. Yeah. Maybe more. Still great though. Yeah. This week at your local comic shops, we got Alien number one, which I had a Didn't... question mark next to because. Didn't Marvel just launch an Alien series like last year? That's yeah. I thought they didn't. We talk about them launching an Alien series yeah, last year. I bought it. I bought Alien number one. Now there's another Alien number one. Like, may, is it another? Was that a mini series? And this is like a new thing. I didn't look it up. I just thought it was. Yeah. Anyway, but it's coming out. So go buy it. Um, All Out Avengers number one. Batman number one twenty seven. Uh, what'd you think of the Batman one twenty six? Did you read that? Uh, I have not yet. Okay. It or wait, no. A, no, I did. I read it, it when it came a, out, so a, that's a why deep, I'm not forgetting. Deep, yeah, it ends with a deep-cut Batman reference where he puts on a weird colored costume. Do you remember that? Yeah. He crawls out of the cave. Like a, yeah. yeah that's a, I was going to ask you what you thought about that or if you were like, what the hell is this? I just like, was like, okay, that's a thing. Like, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure that it, basically it was one of those where I'm sure there's a reference I'm not getting. It's like a thing where he has like a trigger. He's like, it's, an, it's just an insane Batman thing that I hope they pull out of pretty quick because last time they did this, I just thought it was strange and crazy. Where it's like a, he can trigger his brain into forgetting, into thinking he's somebody else. So if he's in danger of like giving away, being, yeah. if he's being like tortured or something or whatever, he can like train himself to turn his brain off and he is Batman of this Zuren Ra or whatever is weird. Zuren Ra is like the code that he has huh. to like think in order to like get his brain to change. So I was like, this is a bold move for the second issue of a run that I love the first book of. And I like the second one too. But then by the end, I was like, what are we doing with the Zuren Ra Batman stuff? I don't know where this is going. So I'll be very anxious to read 127 and see what happens there. Uh, Batman Beyond, Neo Year number six, Black Panther number nine, Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths number four, Ghost Rider number six, Magic the Gathering number 18, New Champion of Shazam number two, New Fantastic Four number four. Gotta get that issue, right? The fourth issue of a Fantastic Four book? (laughs) Come on. I got the first issue of it. It was pretty good, so. Oh, nice. 
Uh, right. Nubia, Queen of the Amazons, number four. Poison Ivy. Wow, lots of number fours this week. Poison Seriously. Ivy, number four. Uh, Punchline, The Trial of Alexis K, one shot. She-Hulk, number six. Spawn, 333. Spider-Man, 2099. Exodus, Omega, one. That is a long title. Star Wars, 27. Twig, number five. And Wolverine, number 24. And so many other wonderful books showing up at your local comic store. Check them out. Steve, you reading anything uh, new and exciting lately? Uh, not particularly. That Poison Ivy's on the pull list. That was a great. Yeah. The, the first three have been great. Um, Spider Man twenty ninety nine Exodus Omega number one. Uh, despite the long name, I pulled the first uh, Spider Man twenty ninety nine Exodus. Um, <laughs> I missed the other four, but mm. uh, this one apparently is a battle between Spidey twenty ninety nine and Green Goblin twenty ninety nine. Oh. With the X Men floating, or X Men twenty ninety nine floating around somewhere in there too. So, it's a uh, you on. know there, there's there's things happening. Yeah, um, this is oh Tom Nancy Coates. That's what I was uh, Tom Nancy Coates uh, Black Panther first trade. I've been digging into. Ooh ooh nice so. awesome. Um, I uh, I just got caught up on Superman Son of Kal El. And mm-hmm. I just picked up a Nightwing, uh, the most recent Nightwing book the other day. I haven't read that one either yet. But um, trying to get caught up, trying to organize a bunch of books, spending some time down here, bagging and boarding, just again, getting behind on stuff, reorganizing some things. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to give another plug for myself while we're talking about comics and just say that if you would like to order a horror anthology that I have a story in with my uh, comic partner, Riley McFarlane, you can do so right now in uh, going to any any local comic book store and asking them to order um, a book called From the Static, Band of Bards Publishing. It's a horror anthology uh, series coming out in November. It's in previews right now. The Diamond Code uh, through Diamond Distribution. The Diamond Code to order it is SCP-221423. Give everyone at your local comic book store that information. Ask them to order it for you, and uh, that would be great. If you could help uh, this get this book on shelves and in stores, and if you want to read a cool horror story for me about um, trauma, then uh, you should do that. So that's my plug, and I'm very proud of it, and I think it's great, and it looks wonderful because Riley is an incredible artist. So what was the uh, what was the title again? Because you kind of clipped at that point. Oh, I'm sorry. The title of the anthology itself is called "From the Stack," from Band of Bards Publishing. So Perfect. you can uh, 16 terrifying stories by a comics best new talents. That's me. There so, you go. Uh, yeah. Check that out um, or ask for it at your local comic book store, please. Wonderful. All right. Let's uh, start wrapping things up with some one shots. Only two one shots for us. Um, I'm going to take a DC one. Steve's going to take a Marvel one just because, you know, why not? Kinda, gotta, why not? You got to you got to live the brand. <laughs> got Exactly. All right, well, it came out this week that, um, in a shock to, I don't know, not many people, uh, not me, for sure. Apparently, this is really, isn't really news. Just a comment made in a uh, Variety article that Warner Brothers regrets making Zack Snyder's Justice League. Wow. Honestly, I, I can't... Uh, do, was, it the, was it the $70 million that you gave someone to make a movie that had already come out <laughs> you know just right. made it longer um or is it the fact that it further emboldened the uh the cult of Zack snyder um to hate warner brothers unless they do the things that they <laughs> want them to do i don't know probably both of those things i would think but yeah of course you regret making it because it didn't even like it did okay on hbo max but it didn't bring as in many numbers as wonder woman 84 or godzilla versus kong or other movies that came out on hbo max that year yeah so i don't know yeah of course of course you regret you you spent so much like you spent so much money you had Zack snyder film a justice league movie then you hired joss whedon to refilm 80 percent of it so you already made the movie twice and then you gave Zack snyder another like 70 million dollars to make it an, again and then you put it out and it was again met with a meh response so you wasted a bunch of money and the fans of that movie are still yelling at you <laughs> to do stuff mm-hmm. that you're not planning on doing and still bringing it up. And to the point where someone like me who loves DC has to m- mute things on Twitter to stop seeing conversations about this movie that I'm sick of seeing. Yeah, of course you regret it. Of course you regret it. So 
not really news, but just a thing to say. Yeah. So, yeah, take it away. Well, other news that's actually kind of news, but kind of weird. Uh, also kind of not, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Spider-Man No Way Home, the more fun stuff cut, uh, returned to theaters and has topped the box office for Labor Day weekend. Um, came back with a $6 million poll based solely on $3 tickets everywhere. <laughs> So you yeah, know, not a not a bad haul to to add to the um tally. There we go. That's the word. Yeah, and it's like the it's like the third highest grossing movie domestically of all time, and it's like yeah. six or seven or something in global box office. It's crazy. Uh, in um, other in other news, DC uh, League of Super Pets got uh, four point five five point four million this weekend, bringing its domestic total yeah, to eighty one million. Heck yeah, it did. Really should have taken Sebastian to that, but I don't think he's sit through a movie in a theater. Oh, really? Yet. Not that. He That's he right. can't even okay. sit through movies at home. Like Star Wars is literally the only movie he's really sat through. And still, didn't you have to watch it in two sections? Uh, that was just a strictly timing thing. But oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was like it was already yeah. eight o'clock, and we're like, uh, we should probably pull the plug on this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. I'm like I'm surprised and not surprised that this did well because it's a movie that a lot of people love. But also like I feel like I forgot that this was happening. I feel like I didn't see any hype for it or promotion for it. I didn't see like I saw when they first uh, announced it and then it yeah, just disappeared. Yeah, exactly. But then nothing. I didn't yeah. I didn't remember that it was doing it until I saw this story. So like I, there was like no promotion behind it, I didn't think, yep. but I don't know. Enough people remembered that uh they went to see it and it it did pretty well. Um, but also there weren't any really like major movie releases this Labor Day weekend, so didn't have a ton of competition. Um, so anyway, as promised, let's before we wrap up here, let's talk about D23. All right. We um, can do that. And maybe some stuff that we think we should see. I don't know if you want to read some highlights from the uh, the schedule there, if there's anything worth Well, the uh, schedule's kind of weird because when, when you look at D23, it's the celebration of all things Disney. All Disney so, stuff, yes. I mean, we you know, obviously National we are Geographic, more into the, like yes, yeah. I mean, and yeah. Disney owns nearly everything. So right. uh, you know, you and I are, are <laughs> look at what Warner Brothers owns. Wars. If they yeah. don't own it, Disney does. <laughs> Disney does exactly, yeah. Um, Sony's got a little chunk, but they also share some of that chunk with Disney, <laughs> right? So, like, um, yeah, this they're they're really good stuff and they're really bad stuff are both owned by Disney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Um so is there what uh as far as um nerd stuff that we talk about here on this show, is there anything that jumps out to you on that schedule that you're looking at right now? Uh they do their annual Legends Awards, which this year Chadwick is being uh Chadwick Boseman oh, is course. being honored. He um, just won an Emmy. Speaking of honoring Yeah, Chadwick for his Boseman, voice voice work yep. in uh What If. Yeah. So cool. uh which by the way, I did start going back through. Uh much better when I picked it back up. Oh, good. Cool. So I'll, I'll finish yeah. it off before they, you know, put another one out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Friday, we're looking at the DC Marvel Games Showcase. Uh, trailers reveals new and upcoming games. Uh, Did you say DC Marvel Game Showcase? Disney and Marvel. D- oh, okay. Disney, Disney and Marvel. <laughs> I was like, what yeah, are we talking no. about? Uh, but so Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and 20th Century. Uh, any games associated with that, there's going to be a full-blown cool. panel on those. Maybe um, some uh, Jedi Survivor. Yeah, yeah, probably some Jedi or... Survivor. Um, maybe also, a like... follow up to Star Wars Squadrons, which. Um, yep. And then uh, Midnight Suns. Probably. Midnight Suns. Yeah. So maybe also, some more concrete. There was a story. I think it was a week or two ago, but the rundown was too full. That the remake. Remember they're remaking um, Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. Yep. But that got that's being moved to another studio or something. Really. Yeah. Huh. They're still making it. It's just a different studio is doing it. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll get an update on that as well. Yeah, that'd be, cool. that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that that still goes down as my favorite Star Wars game of all time. But I'm very excited to finish to play the remake because I never yeah. played the uh, original one. And I feel like it's too far gone. I'm sure we can talk about that when it happens. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mouse Carade. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the costume contest, which is actually being judged by Ashley Eckstein. The voice of Ahsoka Tano. There you go. So, yeah. Um, yeah. 
cosplay contest. I'm sure you'll see some fancy nerd stuff there. Though I'm it sure. is Disney, so it's probably the breadth of everything. Yeah. You, you may find uh, Mike Wazowski somewhere. Yep. Um, talking pets with National Geographic, Bob's Burgers. Marvel Comics, Saturday at 2 is the Marvel Comics panel. Um, All right. Primarily celebrating 60 years of Amazing Spider-Man, but sure. uh, we may see some, some other things there. Uh, I mean, there's got to be like a big Star Wars panel, and there's got to be a big Marvel panel, I would assume. I would assume those two things are probably later in the day, Saturday. Yeah, I'm curious. Mar- like Marvel's got Marvel's to be the headliner, I feel like. Maybe this is just what's streaming? Oh, and not everything's streaming? That could be. It would be crazy if they could stream the entire thing, because I feel like it's like a Comic-Con thing where... There's panels happening all the time. Right. You would think they'd be, like, yeah. at least Hall H or, like, the equivalent of Hall H would be. The equivalent of Hall H, yeah. Yeah. But. Well, anyway. Um, either way, those are some big ones, yeah. but there's some stuff yeah. that's going to be coming out of it. Sure. Schedule aside, what do you think we're going to hear about? Um, let's start with uh, Star Wars-wise. What do you think we're going to hear about at D23? Uh, I think we'll get more on Ahsoka. I the think. Show. Disney yep. Plus show. Sure. Yep. Uh, you know, they're going to have a feature on Andor just because it's dropping to get the hype up. Um, beyond that, I wouldn't be surprised because right now we don't have a ton in the TV space. Well, like um, what they've announced was, what's that? Acolyte. Yeah. get something on the Acolyte. Uh, Uh, they just announced a new cast member for that show as well. A second cast member. I don't remember the name, but yeah. So yeah. Cause right now Rue from Hunger Games is the only... Cast member at all, so yeah, Amanda Lesternberg. Um, that's it. Um, and then I didn't want to. Sc- I I knew it wasn't Amanda, and I didn't want to screw it up, so yeah, I went. There's, with, an, yeah, there's an L in there. What, what with what people would know her from? Yeah, from what I w- is it possible that we'll get more? I mean, we got a Mandalorian season three trailer at Comic Con. Yeah, but they haven't released it fully. Oh yeah, cool they'll they'll drop that. I'm sure. Stuff. Yeah. Um, what I would love, which I'm not holding my breath for, is an update on the thing they announced two years ago, the Lando Disney Plus. Series. Oh, yeah. Yep. I would love an update on that because I would love to see a Lando show. Oh, 100%. Whether it's Billy D. Williams or Donald Glover or both. I would love to see that. Really seems like a no-brainer that they could make a Lando show that's like, Book ended by Billy D. Williams telling stories about oh, his yeah. younger days, and then they flash back to Donald Glover. Like that seems just like printing money <laughs> to me, anyway. Oh yeah, I could be wrong, but you yeah, know, Lando just button. sitting at a sabak table, just spinning a yarn while playing cards. You know, Billy D. is down for that. I think the yep. the trouble is probably Donald Glover. Like he's a very active and creative dude, and who knows yeah. if he wants to be just tied down playing Lando all the time, but. Well, at the same time, I though, I mean, that pitch, you know, you give them that pitch of, like, you're playing Lando, embellishing whatever stories Lando is telling. Yeah, and he was great in Solo, and he yeah. I mean, he signed up for Solo. If you you got to know that he signed for at least a sequel to Solo. The way Solo right. ended, like, they wanted to make a sequel to that movie. Mm-hmm. I still hope they do someday. But, or maybe the Lando show should be the sequel. I don't know. I would love it. But I can't say I'm... Uh, I can't. I I can't say that I I think that it will actually happen. <laughs> right. Twenty three. But I would just that's something that I would love to see. And then. So I, it's possible so, that we get a Rogue Squadron or Taika Waititi update. Also. Yeah, I was gonna say the film wise, we kind of already touched on what we're what we're. Yeah. What's in the pipe? Who knows if they announce something else? But, um, I would hope they don't and just embellish on whatever they've already announced. I feel like, we got. It's got to be. We got to finally hear something about that Taika Waititi movie. Yeah, I feel like like he's done with Thor, right? Like Thor's out the it's out on Disney Plus already. Like the promotion for that movie is, oh, is over. It? Like, let, I think so. Oh, I got to watch it. Yeah. Like, let's let's finally we've been hearing that he's going to make a Star Wars movie for years. I know he's saying like, oh, I didn't even start writing it. Like, I don't know if that's really true. I think that's his way of not not talking about it. I think mm-hmm. he's got something going. Give us a title. Give us something, you mm-hmm. know? Just please. That'd All be right. great. So what about what about okay, now the big let's switch switching gears to Marvel. Okay. The big rumor is that we are gonna get a a cast of the Fantastic Four. Right. Who that is, 
who knows? But that's where you mentioned like everyone from Henry Cavill to John Boyega to other people are being rumored as being announced or something. But like, right. that's all fan speculation. Like we all thought we were going to see Henry Cavill come out on the stage at Comic Con for the Black Adam panel. Like, I guess mm-hmm. what that's not happening. That's just like someone online says, "Oh, John Boyega is going to do this." But I guess I did say I did see an interview with John Boyega where I guess they had this interview had previously interviewed Daisy Ridley and recorded her asking him a question. And her question was, can you look the camera dead in the eye and say that you're not a part of the Marvel cinematic universe. And he laughed in a way that was like the nervous, like (laughs) a a bit of a nervous, like, what do you, how are you asking me this kind of laugh? But then, I mean, I don't know. He's a good actor, so maybe it was an acting. But right. he did say, I haven't had any conversations. There's, She doesn't know anything about this. Like, I would ask her if she's going to be, you know, like kind of throwing it back on her. I would love to see either of them, just in general. I, I like both of them a lot yeah. as actors. I would like to see more of them and stuff. Um, oh, yeah, because he, he was like, I would ask her. I've heard, I've heard her, you know, about a Spider-Woman kind of conversation. So maybe right. you should ask Disney, you know. I would love her as Spider-Woman. I think she'd be great. Jessica Drew. Yeah, I can see that. Um, anyway, yeah, people are saying John Boyega. People are saying Henry Cavill. People are saying... People are still saying... Um, what's his face? That cameoed in Doctor Strange. Oh, yeah, for Reed? Uh, Krasinski there. Yeah, like, yep. yo, no, I don't... That's not going to happen. That I, was a... That was your I'm moment. glad that they did the your, fan service, but I... Yes, if they actually go with him, moment. I'm not going to... I mean, he may be yeah. great, but it's not where... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Seems a little too fan servicey to me. I agree. Um, so that would be cool. I hope we get that. That'd be great. I hope they movie's... initially for the Fantastic Four movie trot out like uh oh god, Chris Evans and Jessica Elba <laughs> and everybody and be like, Hey, we're making it Michael Chiklis and who was who was reading that? Um It was yeah, a Welsh actor with a weird name. name. Yeah. Ian Griffin. Um, Ian Gr- Yep. Yep. Um, I think it was pronounced Ian, but it's spelled. Yeah. Badly. Ian they, uh, yeah, trot them out and then, you know, do the old switcheroo. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, I just want to see Chris Evans trot it out at D23 and people go, yeah, absolutely bad shit. It's like, no, oh, I- no, it was as Johnny Storm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not actually playing him. I'm just referencing that I used to. Right. Um, what else Marvel stuff could we possibly get at D23? Maybe some Guardians 3 footage? Guardians 3 footage, Halloween special stuff, Thunderbolts. Sure. Um, like, they're really, we, it seems like they're really ramping hard to Thunderbolts now. Yeah. And we could get more confirmation on anything they talked about at Comic Con. Blade. Yeah. You know, I feel like they, they said Blade, but they skipped over it real quick. They didn't give a, there was none a, there, like the actors weren't there, directors weren't there. It wasn't like uh, you know Ryan Coogler came out and talked about Black Panther or whoever else yeah. came out and talked about whatever movie. It was like Blade's coming and moving on. You know. Do we see um, anything on Secret Invasion? Sure. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna Star Wars and Marvel. They're gonna reserve some time for the shows for sure. Yep. So they're still pushing Disney Plus stuff. So. Uh, DP three. Um, oh my God! Yes, that's the other. Yeah, I would. I hope and pray we get some Deadpool three news um very excited to hear anything about that at all and of course the thing that everyone else wants to hear is x-men news i don't Um, think we're gonna i don't don't think think we're gonna see any of that i think um you know if that rumor we heard a few weeks ago about they can't do anything until 2025 is true then it's gonna be a while and the closest we're gonna get is deadpool 3 Mm -hmm. um i think deadpool 2 is the most x-men-y movie of any x-men movie just, as far as the actual feel of yeah i i see feels, where you're going it feels more like i wanted all the other x-men movies to feel like i guess I it's know. very comic booky yeah it's very comic booky and like juggernauts in it <laughs> it's just right. so and it feels just like a real a colossus isn't it like it just feels like a real yeah, yeah, yeah. like a, it feels more natural of a universe instead of like because they're living in a heightened X-Men superhero reality because yeah. that's Deadpool. And that makes more sense than trying to force the X-Men into like a grounded take or whatever. Like, I don't need that. It doesn't right. make it weird. Anyway, yeah, that Deadpool through stuff would be great. That'd I mean, great. currently, I, 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 currently the X-Men are living in a tree in New York. So 
Um, yeah, things are weird. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Giant tree in New York. Why the hell? Giant tree. Why not? Why not? Um, they can do it. They can do whatever. And they want. and Summers' family is based on the moon. Oh, I guess I didn't know that part. I yeah. Know about the oh yeah. 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 The Summers family home is on the moon. Wild. Um. You read Wolverine comics lately? What's going on with Wolverine? Do you know anything about that? Uh, last I read was the Percy run, probably about the first 15 or so of them, and he was uh, going all in fighting Dracula. So. Uh-oh. Yeah, one of them. God damn it. Did I stall out? No, you're there. Huh. He said that I stall out, and then he stalled out. You Well, you froze for me first. And then I froze. Ah. So, now I'm... so, um, sorry, I didn't hear your full answer about Wolverine. I just when I read uh, when I was reading those comics that were coming out, and I ended with the uh, Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Kind of made me think, like. I think part of the reason that I don't read X Men more often is that it's so big and so sprawling, and there's so many characters that I am not really familiar with, and they're just trying to do so many giant epic things. It's like I would just love like a small like. Like a more self-contained, like give me like two X Men, give me like Wolverine and somebody else on a mission or something. Yeah. You know? No, this like... was this was him mostly in like the start of the Percy run. I don't know. I'm about probably ten, twelve issues behind on it, but the start yeah. of it was him in Canada, like hunting down Dracula after oh, whoa. <laughs> fighting Omega Red again. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There's there was some things happening, but yeah, yeah. Uh, very contained to just Logan. Yeah, it just seems like any X Men book I have picked up or purchased and read recently is more like giant, grand design stuff, and less like these five characters have to go and stop a bad thing from happening. And it's like that's kind of what I want. Like I don't, I don't need like the heady, trippy epicness of mutant dumb. I'm just like, yo, can you go stop a bad guy. Just like take take the jet, take three dudes or right. three characters, and go stop a thing. So, anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, I would love. Oh, remember they announced a Wolverine game? Like yeah, a, uh, like a Spidey, like a Wolverine, like yeah, Spider-Man. It like, yep, it was like the Spider-Man one, but for Wolverine. I would love an update on that. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be cool. So anyway, I guess this weekend we'll find out. We'll find out hopefully who the Fantastic Four is. We'll find out if Deadpool three is happening. That'd be cool if we. I we probably won't find out about any X Men, but that'd be cool. Uh, maybe we'll find out about some Star Wars stuff, some Taika Waititi movies. Maybe, maybe we'll hear more about a Ryan Johnson trilogy. Probably not. But um, who knows? We will oh. know this weekend. I, I didn't realize Insomniac is actually working on Spider-Man 2 currently. Uh, yeah. Set to release next year. And, and after that, diving hard into Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine. It's a while out Yeah, uh, for sure. But I would still love some more... You know, give us some character design. Give us some characters that are going to be in it. Give us something. You know, I remember that the trailer is very simple. The teaser that they put out was a very simple trailer, but it made me like remember. Yeah. It was enough to remember why I love Wolverine as a character, which has been hard to remember in recent years. Really. Yeah, he's kind of blended into a lot of things. Yeah, or he's been pushed so far to the forefront via Hugh Jackman in a way that is not necessarily true to his character accurate very accurate yeah Yeah. so anyway well i at the same time some of some of my favorite wolverine is when he was actually heading xavier's school oh yeah that's true yeah i can't say that i read that whole thing but i do know that's canon so it's not like it's yeah out of nowhere yeah and it was it was at like the if he's very good in that role if he's working with certain characters and right. the way he works with Kitty and a couple others, it, it, it worked well. Yeah, I agree. I, I do like Wolverine and Kitty Pride working together, for sure. Sorry, Kate, no. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> thousand, she, thousand names for that character. <laughs> she, Shadow Cat done grown up. Yeah, yep. So. But, all right. I think that's all we got. We've digressed. We've talked about the news. We've tangented. And, uh... We've talked about random D23 stuff. So, Steve, is there anything else we should touch on before we wrap up, or are we good to go? 
No, I'd say we're we're good to go. Uh, feel free to check us out on Twitch, YouTube, uh, wherever you find your podcast of choice. Uh, like, subscribe, do the whole follow thing. Leave us a review; it helps us out. Um, beyond that, uh, check us out at themultiverseport.com and keep tuning in. Sundays at nine thirty, and occasionally on Tuesdays at nine thirty. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. Please do, please do. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the multiverse.